Thank you. He watches yes. over me. Yeah. No matter how sick yeah. I am, yeah. Yeah. he yeah. still yeah. watches yeah. over me. Yeah. That's a wonderful God that we serve. Yeah. 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 You want to put your hands together for Brother Kenny. Yeah. 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 Turn with me to the book of Habakkuk. We'll be looking at the second chapter and we'll be reading verse 1. And it reads as follows I will stand my watch mm -hmm. come on, come on. and set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he will say to me. And what I will answer when I am reproved. Let me ask you a question. Do you ever feel like you're praying but God is not listening? <coughs> Do you ever feel like you're the only one talking? More importantly, do you ever feel like you can't hear what God is saying to you? Anyone been there? Mm -hmm. Anyone been there? Yes. Well, can I be real with you today? Yes, sir. A little transparent. Pastor D sometimes struggles yes, sir. with hearing God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm a preacher, I'm a minister, and you know, I'm saved and full of the Holy Ghost, but there are times in my life when I struggle. Yes, sir. To hear God. Mm -hmm. So I had to fix this problem. <laughs> so for the next few Sundays, I will be preaching a series on how to hear from God. And today's subtopic will be Stand Still. My brothers and sisters, we need to hear from God. Why? So that we can make wise decisions. When we can hear God, it's not only going to strengthen our relationship with Him, it will also strengthen our relationships and our marriages with our children, with our co-workers, and the list goes on and on. When we look at this second chapter of Habakkuk, we find the nation of Judah being called to repentance over and over again. But Judah refuses to turn from her sinful ways, mm -hmm. which causes the prophet Habakkuk to fall to his knees and ask God, how long will you tolerate Judah's disobedience? Habakkuk says, I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he, being God, will say to me. I don't know if you understand that, but this that's shouting news. Mm -hmm. Because what Habakkuk is telling us is that God is speaking. Mm -hmm. Come on now, teach. That's something to shout about. Teach. What Habakkuk is telling us is that we have access to the Creator. Mm -hmm. He's telling us that God still cares. Mm -hmm. Habakkuk is telling us that when we pray to God, He is still listening. Mm -hmm. Habakkuk is reminding us this afternoon that we too can hear from God. But on today, we want to focus on the word stand. Mm -hmm. Now, the word stand in its context means, in this particular part of Scripture, it means to stop or remain motionless. In order to hear God, we have to learn how to stand or become still. Mm -hmm. We live in a microwave society where we want answers to all our questions yesterday. Instead of using books to do research like we used to in the old days, 
We simply get on our computers and we click our mouse mm -hmm. and we have thousands and thousands of answers mm -hmm. to choose from. All right. We find ourselves preoccupied with work and family and friends and church activities. And I know you might be asking, okay, preacher, how do these activities stop me from hearing God? Because the list that I just gave you, there's nothing bad about spending time with family and friends and church activities. Amen? Amen. Amen. So how, how do these activities stop me from hearing God? How do these activities not allow me to hear God speaking? How do these activities interfere with my conversation with the Father. My brothers and sisters, God is always speaking. We are not always listening. All right. All right. Amen? So, All right. We are so busy listening to our husbands, our wives, our children, our father and mothers, our boss, our neighbors, our friends, we're so busy listening to the TV and the radio, the computers. We're so busy listening to what the newspaper has to say and psychic hotlines. <laughs> Amen, somebody. All right. Amen. We hear everyone but the voice of God. Mm -hmm. How in the world can we possibly find time to hear God with all of that busyness going on. Mm -hmm. all right. For example, it's time to buy a car. You think you may need a car. You just might want a car. Mm -hmm. We consult with everyone up under the sun. We call our daddy. Yeah. We call our brother or our, our friend that's a mechanic. We talk to the car dealer and listen to his suggestions. Uh, we go to the bank and we try to find out if they'll finance it for us. Amen? Amen? We even take time to talk to ourselves. And we never consult God. Come on, say so. The one thing that we do do, we say, God, I need a ride. <laughs> Amen? Amen. 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 But you got to understand this. God is concerned with everything that we do. Yes. He's ready to show you how to buy the car. He's ready to show you when to buy the car, where to buy the car, how much to spend on the car, what model the car should be, what color it should be, and whether the car should be new or used. Amen? Amen. But he's waiting for us to come to him and ask. Right. Then we've got to turn and wait for him to answer. Mm -hmm. Because our God has all the answers yes. and he's ready to speak. Mm -hmm. The question is, are you ready to hear? Yeah. When we are engaged in our daily activities, the enemy can keep us confused by putting things in our paths that look like, sound like, and feel like the truth, causing us to make irrational decisions mm -hmm. that take us where we don't need to be. Say so. And it will cost us more than we are willing mm. or have to pay. Let's look at this word stand again. So like we said, stand means to become still. When you are still, you should be, number one, at rest, Number two, free from sound or noise. And number three, should be able to find some peace. Mm -hmm. So why do we need to become still? Point number one. First, you need to get still so that you can get some rest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Amen. You got to understand, when we're moving all the time, the enemy can keep your life out of balance. When you're always moving around and going here and going there, something 
will always go lacking. Mm -hmm. The husband or wife doesn't get enough quality time. The kids are ignored and church and God are put on the back burner. Mm -hmm. It's hard to hear God when you are physically, mentally, and spiritually tired. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Jesus is our example. In Mark 1 and 35, okay. Scripture tells us that Jesus prayed early in the morning. That lets me know that somewhere between the day before and that morning, Jesus went to sleep and he, he got some rest. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? He was a man, so he had to get some sleep. Jesus understood that in order to hear his father, he had to get some rest. You know, you've worked all day long and you've dealt with co-workers and, mm -hmm. and then you go in there and you try to have some alone time with the Lord. You try to sit there and you just can't hear God because you're tired physically. You're ready to go to sleep. Amen? Amen. Amen. Mentally, that strain from work, you can't hear God. Amen. So you sit down, you pray, and then you just pop up and you go about your way. You get your shower and you hit the bed. But if we want to hear God, number one, we have got to get some rest. Point number two, in order to hear from God, you have to become free from sound and noise. Satan loves it when things are loud, especially when we are trying to hear God. Over the course of a day, things get loud and noisy to the point where it's, it's hard to think and it's hard to hear clearly. Amen? Amen? That's when the enemy steps in with misleading information Come on, and he man. puts it in our path so that we'll jump on it. And the reason we jump on it is because we're already tired. We just want an answer. Quick solution. Quick solution, mm -hmm. yes. Quick fix. Microwave society. So we'll jump on the first thing that we see. Yes, sir. Amen. People always want answers at an inopportune time. Jesus, being our example, also in that verse of Mark 135, it tells us that he not only got up early in the morning to pray, but he went to a solitary place. He went to a place where there was quiet. Amen? Uh -huh. Amen. We've got to be just like Jesus. We've got to find that quiet place to go and talk to God. Why? Because if you wait to try to pray to him in the middle of the day, it's going to be hard to hear because you have so many distractions. Amen. It's hard to hear God when... You're trying to listen to your boss. You're trying to answer the phone to talk to your wife. You're talking to your mom. You're talking to your friends. And then, depending on where your workplace is, well, you know what? It doesn't make any difference where your workplace is. Noise, over a long period of time, begins to work your nerve. Yeah. It could be something simple as a telephone ring. But after you heard it all day long, mm -hmm. it will work your nerve. In order to hear God, you have got to find a place of solitude. In order to hear from God, you must get still. You must get some rest. You must find a place of solitude. Amen. And lastly, you must be able to find some peace. Amen? Mm -hmm. That same verse of scripture as you read two or three verses down in Mark 135, you will find the disciples looking for Jesus. They say, Jesus, everyone's looking for you. Well, Jesus' response was, he got up, he says, let's go to the other town, to the other towns, I have to preach. Which lets me know that Jesus in his prayer time heard God. Why? Because there was some peace he didn't hesitate when he got up. He didn't have any doubt when he got up. Come on, come on. Jesus got up with purpose. He said, let's go. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. That lets me know he has peace about what God said. Amen? Amen. We've got to get to that place just like Jesus. We've got to get still and find some rest so that we can be rested up so that when we get into that place of solitude, we can focus on God and God alone. We don't have all that clutter mm -hmm. through the course of the day to interfere and stop up our hearing. And when we get in that place of solitude and we hear God speak, we know then we can get up because we have peace. Amen. We know the only voice that we heard is his. Mm -hmm. We're not listening to Joe Blow, Sister Sally. We only heard Jesus Christ. And I'm so glad this afternoon that Jesus took the time to get still. Amen. That Jesus took the time to stand on your behalf and mine. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so glad that Jesus yes, sir. took the time to get some rest and get up early in the morning yeah. to talk to his dad. Yeah. Amen. 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 I'm so glad he didn't so wait so to the middle of the day after yep. he had been casting out demons and healing the sick. And raising the dead, Come on, he did it early in the morning. Early. Right. And he talked to his dad. Yeah. And I'm so glad that Jesus, after talking to his dad, he found peace yeah. from what he heard. Uh -huh. And he got up with a purpose. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so glad this afternoon that when he got up with that purpose, he made the decision to go towards that hill called our God. And he carried that cross yeah. up that hill. Yeah. I'm so glad that so Jesus glad. took the time yeah. to hear from his father yeah. Yeah. that he would hang on a cross for you and I one day. Yeah. Yeah. That he would give up the ghost yeah. that we might have the right yes. to eternal life. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That we would have Amen. the opportunity yeah. to spend Amen. eternity in heaven. Yes. Amen. Amen. The Amen. word of God for everybody. Yeah, man.